Deeply awake, Kathy Vick, Chats 2017. And I have a date tonight, so of course I have a blemish on my upper lip. Of course, it's just, I, I think it's just uh, proof that I have a really good sense of humor. <laughs> and just like, my, my basic MO has got to be, hey, just don't sweat it. There's a lot of imperfection about, just don't worry about it. That's because I always, I always have a pimple. <laughs> always. Are you kidding me? Oh, we're going to have a date in a week and a half. All right. The day before. Bloom. What do you do with that? It's stress. Well, I, I don't know. I interpret it. It's, uh, it's me um, challenging myself to love my imperfection, to love myself regardless of what I would deem an imperfection. If, if we're going to get hung up about a pimple, then we're going to have a problem here. Right? Right. So get it out in the open. I'm kind of, I'm that kind of girl. Just get it out in the open, lady, mister. So, whatever. Um. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm feeling really weird and good. And um, so I thought I'd come to you. And I think what I'm going to do is uh, probably two videos. One, because I just want to talk about my own damn self. That's this one. And then the other one's going to be about the eclipse. Because, whoa, am I getting info. I'm getting some intel. All right. Well, you know. Everybody said Barb Marcianic and Cryon and every everybody and their cousin has said, um, yeah, as the as the process intensifies, it's gonna blow your freaking mind. Well, mind blown. Are you there? That mountain and star child thing, that was intense and that has stayed with me, this sensation of just it's really 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 at this point it's okay and I'm it's moving from a place of really needing to be met what happens if I can't be met I mean that's pretty much the question isn't it it's a question that's dogged me since I was a kid and I talked to my friend Chris as children we were talking about this this chasm the space in between people and we both wished we could just touch each other and we could know each other. And just the longing to be able to do that and to just stop talking and feel and know. Yeah, I was talking like that with my friend when I was a child. And then I hear the same longing come out of my kid's mouth. It's like, oh, baby. Yeah. I know you feel completely and utterly alone. You're not. <laughs> That's the syndrome. That's the prison. So, um, so here's the weird part. So here's this eclipse coming, right? And I know it's the, it's the real deal. It's sort of finally beginning to dawn on me. Oh yeah, I really have had a number of exquisite um, extraterrestrial and metaphysical happenings. I'm a bit of a, what do you want to call it? I'm a sparkly person, that's for sure. And I've said, you know, you put me in the 1300s and tell my story and everybody's going to go, wow, that's a saint. Wow, that's a magic person. It's a good thing that she was protected in a convent. That's what you'd say. And here I am getting roughed up, and I realized, oh my God, it kind of all came together for me yesterday morning. Because it's absolutely, utterly true. The key players in my life, the ones connected to me by blood, we all know this big thing's going to come, and it's going to be a complete change, okay? We're all aware of it. And not one of them. Not what, not, it would never even cross my mind to have anyone, anybody, anybody say to me, I am so happy for you. I'm so relieved. 
because I really I know that you're just going to really take to everything like a duck to water. I know this has been really hard for you, and um, and I just I have every faith in you. So um, even if you you know stumble, even if it's hard, um, I, I just have every faith in you. So just go get him, girl. Not one. Okay. And it all came it all became crystal clear. Because now I, I deal differently. I see myself differently and I'm having different relationships with these people. That's okay. Worry about me. I was a flake, okay? I get it, all right? If you want to judge by past performance, then yes, I'm doomed. All right? I get it. But I'm not there anymore. <laughs> I'm just not. And and I I was sitting on the side of my bed, feeling like oh my god nobody's for me no one's in my corner and all that sadness and all that why am I even fucking here if nobody even gives a shit if I live or die if nobody really cares and they all expect me to fuck it up why even bother all of that came crashing down and I saw it as justified understandable. A pattern and a bunch of horse shit. Because what I really saw in that moment were three people around me, smiling, trying to protect me, trying to keep me safe and not knowing how, not knowing my language and me not knowing theirs, and trying to leapfrog over piles of misunderstandings and you know past goof ups I was like oh okay well it's not fun to worry for other people it's not a fun experience for the person because really what what when I what, if I worry about someone which I don't I suspended that practice although it's still hard sometimes Worrying about someone um, to me just means that I I'm, I don't think that they're capable of face, of uh, being in uh, in in being able to face their challenges, and um, I'm pretty convinced they're going to fail and it's going to be bad. It's a pain experience. It's a projected pain experience, but that doesn't matter. It's still a pain experience. And so I realized that and I thought, well, you know, I, I'm not really sure I want somebody to be worrying for me because then they're going, here, would you like this pain? <laughs> it's like, well, I appreciate the thought. I have to do a little bit of transmutation, but thank you, I think. Well, how about this? How about whenever there's a worry thought that comes up? And I'm talking to myself about someone else, how well they're doing, how if, if they're getting it, if they'll ever get it, whatever. We all have those, oh my God, moments with others. When you look at somebody, you just go, oh my God, <laughs> are they ever going to understand what they're doing? Oh my God, I can't talk sense to them. And they keep running into walls. Oh my God. What do you do? You stand there and love them. Like a mama. Like a mama. You know? So I'm going to I'm going to do that with the with the naysayers and these are also the I mean my son is like a total advocate for me in my work. Total. But but very uh very secretly doesn't want to appear too too enthused but he's willing to listen once in a while it's kind of freaky and the others no ew ew don't talk about that shit around me and that was like oh my god what Jesus said is true a prophet is not liked in their own neighborhood well all right I was an asshole most of the time. Why wouldn't they have issues with me? Ooh. All right, I admit it. 
I cop to it. When deep in misunderstanding, one does things that are dumb and hurtful that others are probably going to hang on to for a while and for good reason. For good reason. Because some things are just icky. <laughs> but we all do them. And when do you get to the point where you're not sitting on the bed crying over it? Well, my moment was yesterday. <laughs> it's like, well, okay. Alrighty then. Because what I saw was me going, huh, how can I make these fucking bars really tight? How can I make them so tight that there is no sunlight at all? Where everywhere I look is a snarl or a snicker or a whisper to somebody else or an empty seat. Let's do that. Let's make the prison walls thick. And then let's figure out that I did that because I'm that powerful. I resonated with people who wanted to put me in prison cells, who were themselves in prison cells, again and again and again. If, you know, prisons are, prisons are mental constructs. I was imprisoned by my weight at 300 pounds and five foot three for years. I felt imprisoned by my sexuality and my misunderstanding of it. I felt imprisoned financially and often I was. And an onlooker can look at it and say, well, that's all you're doing. No shit, Sherlock. But when it's said like that, it's like, well, you dumbass. That's always the, you know, the, the not said thing. Well, it's all you're doing. It's all your what, gang? It's all your fault. That's not loving. That's high, that's high horse critical bullshit. That's the lower agreement field. Because that's seeing harm. You don't assign fault. I wrote an essay called No Fault State. You don't assign fault to something that's good. Okay, well, yeah, I go into the hospital and I get surgery. And I, I'm able to hobble out in a way that doesn't pain me. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, that's that doctor's fault. You know, you wouldn't hear me saying that. Oh, that's all those nurses' fault that I'm walking good and don't have pain. No. No. You use fault if there's harm. Well, what if there's no harm? Huh? Uh-oh. And there I am. I mean, like, the biggest insult, really. And, like, how am I going to deal with this when the people I love the most, who I really just want approval from, can't approve of me? Instead, they're, they're, they're convinced I'm going to fuck it up again. What the fuck do I do now? We'll shrug and say, yeah, well, you know what? Whatever. I know that's not true. And I, I can explain why if you want to listen. Because I figured it out. Because I've had a long time to think about it. And I'm kind of smart. So um, that's sort of how that plays out. And it's, I think, the, the behavioral um, impact of this understanding that, you know, what I always wanted, I'm actually getting, but I was so afraid of it. Because if I'm a mountain, how's anybody going to get next to me and, like, give me sugar? How do mountains get sugar? And then I saw that that uh, meditation of, oh, well, you know, you can, I can, I can have any experience I want. I can manifest as a little nymph. I can do whatever I want on my mountain. And that experience is real. Woo! So that was really nice. And it took the, the panic away of being alone. That was my panic. What happens if I go all the way with this stuff? I'm going to be completely unlovable, untouchable, unloved, untouched. Ew, I don't want that. And I, I was really terror. I was I was sort of scared about that most of all. 
Now, you'd think I wouldn't be. I wasn't all that afraid of, like, croaking or things like that. That's like, okay, well, you know, if I've got to shed this mortal coil, I'm going to come back remembering everything, and the tapes are going to be there, so it's not that hard. I have a dream oh, deeply awake, and I happen to be an intuitive soul, and I go on there, and suddenly it's like, oh, and I'll be home again. I mean, that'll it's, a, it's an aid. Ain't that nice? Turnaround time is short now. I did a turnaround in the 40s into the 60s, and that was a little bit too fast. But now it's pew. Because the energy is different. The amperage is up. How can I talk like this? Well, 1542. I'm going to say that... Um, What's happened, I think, is is finally coming uh, home to a lot of information and finally kind of just putting it together and understanding what it means to be human but to be this other thing because I've always been this other thing but then it really amped up. So I need to talk about Antares, guys. I mentioned it with um, the prodigal son and the galactic tail. Um, but it's coming through a lot and it has, it has to do with the eclipse but it has it's personal and that's why this is only for people who give a damn about like the storyline which I think is highly interesting I'm 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 riveted <laughs> I may be the only one no I'm not but wow so I had this um, thing happen and I've said before Hold on, I'm not comfortable. My hip hurts just a minute. I said before that, um, just recently, on that Galactic Tail one, that um, in, uh, in April of uh, 2012, I had an event occur in the middle of the night on a smoke break at work doing a 12 on a med surge floor. And um, and it was this very holy moment. It was like this moment in time, and it was it was just it was beyond holy. And there was a picture of a of a quasar, this light, this beautiful light. I've never seen anything quite so beautiful. And it just was pushing, 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 pushing. It was quasar, 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 quasar. And they gave me a lot of information, which I wrote down at, on their instruction inside of a book, which I then gave away. But the message that rang through, that I t carried back, was uh, the son of Antares is born. Okay. <laughs> what the hell does that mean? I've got, I've got a patient who's awake. <laughs> who's kind of nutty and I'm tired and uh, I'm worried about money so the son of Antares is born okay but it wasn't just that I went I, I, I had to go like I said on to Google and look up what a quasar was I didn't know what a quasar now that came through again the whole information when I looked up um, I'll mention that in a minute, but the quasar. So I, I, I looked for quasars and I got images. And I don't know, it just was see, it was so sad. I cried because I, I was scrolling, 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 scrolling. Look at all these quasars. And I realized I wasn't going to see what I just saw. And it just made me so sad. And there I was, you know, in my scrubs at work squeezing out a tear about this and then I had to go you know really jump into the skin suit and go do my thing and um I never knew what's Antares what's that well every time I do a dive into Antares I get stuff that I didn't expect and it all kind of came together today there's this like pseudo Christian um metaphysical researcher dude who did or girl who did uh, I, I looked up the four watchers 
because Rick Levine, I've often seen four pillars in my meditations for, for people and I've heard so much about the architects and I understand about over souls and I understand it's well with my soul that, you know, um, it's individuation and it's, and it's just a matter of where your consciousness is at, where, what you can access. It doesn't mean that I myself am an architect. But I can access that information and access that level of spin. And I understand that um, I am part of that. And, and Terry, that's the, that's the watcher of the West in charge of autumnal sol, sol, no, autumnal equinox. Aw, that happens to be my favorite. And um, what's the other one? Sunset. Mmm, yummy. And uh, so Rick Levine was going on about what they all do. And it, I mean, it's like, duh. These are the principles that, that Marge would tell me. You know, <laughs> and I just, and the teachers. And he just obviously, it's just obvious. And I forget exactly what mine's about. I forget. But isn't that nice? All right. Well, these are very simple truths, are they not? This simple simple laws of conduct, <laughs> of energy, of harmonics. So that's nice. Okay. I, I can live with that. So, um, how do you reconcile it? Did I mention I'm going on a date tonight? And that's what really scared me, is how am I going to be alone this whole time? Is everybody going to always snarl and, like, reject me because I scare them or because I threaten them or because I remind them of what they want to be or because I'm a freak or whatever it is? What do I do? So, I got my uh, download. And uh, with that comes really just... More of a burst of of what the what the bigger identity is, because in the end it's it's all geometric. In the end, it's all unlanguaged and unlanguageable, and in the end, it's all unity. So last night I did a couple twenty two twenty three. Um, I did a couple of videos I didn't release, but um, it just it has to do with um, with being aware in the moment and not pushing it aside just because no one else knows it that's really weird imagine that do you simulate that in your life do you have something that you know that no one else in the whole wide world is supposed to know because if they did well it would pretty much blow the lid off everything you got anything like that in your uh, repertoire? You have the feeling that you're hiding? Are you afraid of success? I mean, I, my contention is this is these are not um, these are not issues that Kathy Vicker is going through. These are issues that everyone's going through. And I'm really, I, last night I was just like so happy because like, wow, that was really super hard to go, what I, go where I went with this bullying mentality and how personal it got. Oh my God. And painful and just pitch black. Woo! It was nasty. But I'm glad I went through it and recorded it because, woo, my goodness me. Is it black, pitch black and nasty? Um in politics. Oh my oh my. People are being so naughty. And right out there in the open and you know like two degrees away from understanding why they're doing it. You know it's like oh it's so obvious. Oh my god. You're such a lying sack of shit. I can see right through you. And I don't know. I know I'm not the only one there. And it's always very helpful when I ha when I can uh, hear other people who are there, you know, and it's like, oh my God, yeah, this is unsustainable. And then, oh my golly, 
listening to Rick Levine about the eclipse, ooh, baby. Not only very triggering, um, kind of bringing home a lot of information that I have received lately in bits and pieces, um, but just a further confirmation, and that's how I want to end, because this is a kind of a personal, autobiographical, it, is there an epilogue if something's an ending? Well, you know, I've, I have been thinking about changing the name of this thing. And I think after the eclipse that might be appropriate. To be frank, I'm not sure what's going to be appropriate after the eclipse and what won't. I've been reminded again and again. It's just, I knew, I, w I knew it had to be done because I knew there would come a day when it would not interest me anymore. Oh my God, mine is about obsession. It is very wise to go very deep and the only way you can fail is if you get obsessed. That's mine. Woo! And I am quite obsessive. So. Um. I've, I've written an essay, I think it's called Obsessive. It just, you know, wow. Wow. Okay. All right, son of Antares. It makes me feel so good. And just good. Knowing I was a dude all this time, and then, you know, and then when that happened, and then when it finally came home, it was like Magartha, this this being that I had connected to and gotten so much information and love from, who was just so healing and like, so much like a loving balm. And she was like the sea. And I saw the son of Antares, this big ball of fire. And they began to spin. And instead of the, the ball of fire going into the water, and this was all happening in my pelvis. Instead of that, what I saw was they were sort of dancing and mutually attracted and repelled and all this beauty, you know. But they were, they were finally together. <sighs> and then I realized that I actually, this twinned energy of um, mas masculine and feminine, divine masculine, divine feminine, whatever fire and water, thought and emotion, activity and repose, light and dark, <laughs> that these are spinning in our, in our energetic fields and they're, they're what anchors the 12, uh, shock, the 12, uh, DNA fields with the chakras. It's these 24 spinning balls. That's what they would always say. The 24 spinning balls. That's what they were talking about is this Antares energy or this um, this light and then the um, the water. So to have these last meditations be on identity being that of uh, being big and being okay with that, being able to access whatever I want depending on um, how it feels. Is it, good to, is it good to feel crouched up in a tent afraid I'm going to get hit or afraid I'm going to uh, be obliged or tempted to hit another or um, do I want to be the the moonlit, starry-eyed nymph, or do I want to be the you know the butch lumberjack, or what you know what role? And I I really can live with that. Then I can I can begin to play and create um, on very fertile soil and recovering soil, um, better innervated soil now still patchy but but recovering um, because there was a way to manage energy that has changed and um, so um, you know I, I think that it's uh, for me anyway and um, 
it, it's a much different, more comprehensive way to manage energy. Is all I can say. There are fewer internal uh, rules. There's fewer structures. There's more flow, and it just feels easier. And it's easier to drop into it and do it. And it's, it's not to manipulate, it's not to do anything except it's just being in flow. Because I'm not the only one in the room. So, you know, I'm just flowing. But what am I flowing as and toward? I'm flowing as a bigger mountain that has a history who knows a lot of shit and can make fun of it and who's integrated some things and I'm moving ever toward that star child so um, I think that's a good place to be a, a place of, uh, of having understood a few things and having been given great gifts but um, I think that uh, it, it, it uh, the, the gifts magnificence um, were met with my willingness to give them away. It's one of the reasons I, I didn't want to, to charge anything for this because um, it wasn't my doing really. Here I am angry most of the time that I'm in this position resentful. Yikes. Yikes. That's some messed up thinking, isn't it? All right. To close, there is something I want to say. I, I've always, uh, and it's one of those highfalutin things that I'll save to the end because it's pretty, people might take it wrong if you didn't understand me. Um, ooh, it's gone. Ooh, isn't that cool? I love it when that happens. I don't make fun of myself anymore. There are times when I'm in conversation or when I'm texting or when I'm um, whatever and um, I can feel something just lift away. It's like, oh, here's the next thought. Whoosh, gone. Okay, good. All right, that's it's fine. Best left unsaid. And I think they're beginning to realize the only way they're going to shut me the F up is to just not feed me lines. That's fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm learning STFU real good, and it's very helpful. I'm seeing a lot of benefit from it. And I don't feel manipulative because uh, I, I've always associated silence with manipulation and um, the choosing of words with wickedness. So um, I know now why. And uh, it's just how I see things. Whoa. All right, I'll give you the download. Wow. Okay. So uh, a couple days ago I saw really, really strongly, as I was watching a scene that was very innocent and beautiful and happy-making, um, I saw a picture of the, the tree of life and Eve and the snake. And the snake took prominence. And I was told, uh, look, that, look, look at that. You know, so much has been written and talked about the, uh, the two pretty much numbskulls who didn't know any better, didn't know right from wrong, didn't know good from bad, didn't know dark from light. All they knew was innocence. So much has been talked about that. But, um, hmm. Some do, but not a lot. They don't talk about the snake. The snake knew. The snake was on the ground. The snake had his take. And he knew more than these two innocent people. And he told him just enough. 
Did he need to go into quadratic equations? Well, it would have been helpful for future reference. And let's not forget, it's a fable. The idea here is that the snake had more information than the humans. Knew more, understood more, and was able to guide. Was able to inform. And that, in this culture, is seen as evil. Well, the snake could have said anything. Just keep it in mind. We all can say anything. Let it be what's honestly inside. And then no matter how difficult the words, they won't be seen as devilish. And even if they are, you'll know they're clean. That's how I understood that. But today I understood, okay, well, you know, all this tree imagery. Sure, the snake knew a couple things. And the snake had a mouth and could say, hey, hey, guess what, princess? <laughs> Have I got a deal for you? It's yummy. It's complicated. <laughs> and it's sitting here. And they're all saying you shouldn't. Interesting. <laughs> I just find that <clears throat> interesting. La 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 la. A trickster. A Jupiter. An actor. But consider the other player. The tree. The tree stands in full knowing. The tree feeds, nourishes, protects, hosts that snake who's so smart and so talkative and so sly. And the tree bears unknown jewels Edible. The tree says, you know, you can eat this if you want. You could try it. And all these voices go, that's going to be horrible. Mini, 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 me. This is what it means. Mini, 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 me. Come on now. It's like going from black and white TV to, to color TV, that's all. From going to um, one of those IMAX screens to a 3D experience. So I think the idea of blaming the snake is sort of ridiculous and indicates our level of consciousness. There's something more that absorbs all, that sees all, that is all. Standing right there, no talks about la 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 la. So, I don't know. I give this to you. So, if you start feeling mountainy, you'll be okay with that. Once you're mountainy, you'll know it's okay, Lordy. Oh, I wonder if it's okay. Well, I was there for like, I don't know, how many years was that? When did I write that piece? In 12? <laughs> Thick and heavy coating. No, coating of coding overlays for one so it's really okay the people I have in my life we get along you know like I don't know biscuits and gravy now we complement each other and we appreciate each other and see each other's good and um, so can, you know, difficult relationships where resentment is a high probability be healed? Yes. But the person feeling really resentful needs to kind of maybe speak up and start having some self-worth. Oh, boy, oh, boy. So, yeah, it's very human. And it's very extraterrestrial. And it's very, to me, it's very sacred. And yet it's highly biological and it's mind-blowing 
and it's ascension. So I'm really glad that I can be a spokesperson for it in this way because I think in the end it kind of allows me to speak to a lot of different people, a lot of different groups, about a lot of different things. And that's nice. So no one's excluded. Nope, nobody. If I call you on your shit, I'm not excluding you. I'm just calling you on your shit. Feel free to call me on mine. <laughs> <laughs> I have blind spots. <laughs> but be nice. And if I'm not nice, then snap my nose. I try to be nice. Because, I mean, there's, you, can, you can take your medicine with sugar or with um, vinegar. And um, I'm, it's, it's really at this point, I have no medicine to offer. <laughs> I'm disinterested. <laughs> you just be you. Just do you. Just do you. I'm busy being a mountain. I got a ch star child to deal with. And I have a physical reality in which to frolic. So I guess that's all I have to say. I love this uh, cloudy day. It feels very good. And um, I, oh shoot, yeah, I gotta go do something. And then, um, and then I'm gonna come back and uh, talk about the eclipse and what I learned from Rick and um, all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to listen to this and see if it's okay. It's pretty edgy, I think. But um, I'm not sure I mind that anymore. It's too long, though. Damn it. All right. Well, when I say I'm going to riff, I'm going to riff, okay? Okay. My cat. I'm sorry about my cat, but she gets really affectionate when I talk, just like Minky used to do. Minky's not with us anymore. Bartok does crap that Rosie used to do. This one does stuff that Rosie used to do. They both do things that Minky and Rosie used to do. And Minky and Rosie just left. Minky at the eclipse. And she was very regal. She was a very regal cat. Very, she had that energy that my cats have had. Just queens. And um, so I told my kid, hey, you can grieve. I don't, I don't, I don't, I, it's understandable. It's sad. It's loss. You don't get to pet her anymore. It's, it's icky. Ugh, owie, owie, owie. But here's the thing. It's a soul group. And they're committed to you. They have an obligation to show up. So, um, you know, and he said, oh, you mean they'll come through some other way? So, yeah, they'll come, so, yeah. Maybe it's a stuffed animal. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a documentary. I don't know. Something. They'll come through. And then, you know, you'll always have them around. The only way you can get rid of them is to say, hey, go away. <laughs> it doesn't sound like you want to do that. So, you know, just let it be. It's okay. They, they weren't, they, they didn't want to stay. They were done. Now we have these guys. <laughs> they are acting crazy. So, whatever. It's okay. And, you know, so that's how we roll around here. And it's a lot to manage sometimes. Um, because we still have to figure out a way to get crap done and not snarl at each other. So, you know, wow. <laughs> These are fascinating times for everyone. Because a lot of people are awakening. And I'll talk more about that in a little bit after I get my my beauty on. Namaste.